Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on my channel Pokepidge. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is one of the best games of all time and probably my most favourite game of all time, considering I'm very Pokemon centric. It is probably the most extensive game I've ever played and I don't just mean in location, I mean in the main story, all of the side quests and also in the game mechanics. I've played it a lot during lockdown and during this COVID-19 pandemic, couldn't even see my family on Christmas Day, I've been locked in, so why not just go blow up some monsters? Breath of the Wild incorporates many different elements, such as various ways to obtain items, or actively altering your temperature, or even cooking with various items to get different results. I have done a tips video for Breath of the Wild before, which is up in the corner now if you wanted to watch later, but here are 10 more tips for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. First up, have you ever thought to yourself, why are those rushrooms so high? I haven't got the stamina to get all of those. Well, I'll give you a little trick here. You don't need the stamina, and sometimes you don't even need to climb. If you've got enough arrows and you're happy to just shoot them down, then do so. This will apply to pretty much anything that's on the side of a mountain, from swift violets to rushrooms, anything like that. Shoot them down, collect them at the bottom. It'll only cost one arrow per item. And if you've got enough of those and you can sacrifice a few, then just do it. It always helps to find items using stasis. If you're just running around in the wild, no enemies around you, no danger seemingly, just put your stasis rune on and it will highlight items around you. It will also, if you've got the upgrade to the stasis plus in the game, show you enemies, which you can freeze with this. And my next tip I recommend to you is just keep everything. I know it sounds like a really simple thing to do, but genuinely keep everything. I mean, if you need to sell a few items to make some money, fine, but try and keep some back. Don't sell all of one item, for example. The fairy goddesses actually upgrade clothing one stage at a time for every fairy that you unlock, I suppose. There are four throughout the game. They'll cost you 100 rupees for the first, then 500, then 1,000, then 10,000. I'll show the locations for you here. And back to my point. These fairies upgrade clothing using items, and they are always going to be essential. These items range from Bokoblin horns to sapphires, which you can sell if you want, they're very high in value. However, like I say, they can be used to upgrade clothing, and once you upgrade each set of clothing twice, you will get a set bonus. For example, the stealthy clothing I'm showing you here will increase my night speed. The barbarian clothing that you can see here will reduce your stamina for charge attacks. And even the flame resistant clothing here that you can buy in Goron City will make you flame proof. Meaning that you can go and take down those massive taluses that are made of lava rocks and it won't burn you whatsoever. One of these items you should always keep on you is the Fairy Item. This item is basically a sort of smaller version of the Mipha's Grace Power. If you're not familiar with Mipha's Grace, it's the power you get once you beat Varnaboris for the Zora. It essentially revives you once after you die, and then the power will take a bit of time to recharge. However, if you have fairies in your inventory, these will do the same and recover you with up to four hearts. You can then obviously heal yourself up as soon as this happens, so they basically save your life. You can find these obviously all around fairy fountains, and also a little trick, if you've already got some in your inventory, they won't appear, however, if you just simply hold them and then walk forwards, they will appear again because they're technically not in your inventory, then you can put them back and collect the new ones. You're welcome. Another item you can find around fairy fountains is the Endura Carrot. There are about two or three around every single fairy fountain, and you should really utilise these. When cooked, they give you a full recovery to your stamina, plus some temporary stamina. This is exceptionally useful when you are climbing, because imagine you're quite near the top, or even halfway, and you run out of stamina. Just have one of these, heal the stamina fully, with a little bit extra, and you can complete your climb. There were also about 18 or so Endura Carrots spread around Satori's Mountain, but like I say, these are very spread around, so you're going to need to be looking very carefully to find them, but it is a good place to look for them. However, you can always use the Shaker Sensor. Honestly, use this as much as possible. This works with the camera rune you have. Just take a picture of any item, for example, Endura Carrot, and then go to your map and set the Shaker Sensor to that item from the picture. It will then show you if there are any nearby and also where to locate them. Obviously, if the signal's stronger, then you're walking in the right direction. Eventually, you'll find them and it'll be fantastic. However, the best thing about this is that you don't just use it on items. For example, you can use it on treasure chests. 
Always have that shaker sensor on, take a picture of a treasure chest, and they will show you where they are around you. I can guarantee you on a playthrough you will miss so many treasure chests around you. However, if you've got the shaker sensor set to that treasure chest, you won't. My biggest recommendation for this shaker sensor though is to take a picture of a rare ore deposit. There are so many of them around the Eldin region, as you can see here from my map, I've been marking where the rare ore deposits are, and it's worth it just to look for a few, even if it's just once. Mark them on your map with a little crystal sign, and then every now and again, just go back to this route and smash them up. Pretty much all the time you get something amazing, like a topaz or a sapphire, ruby, even diamonds. I actually make more money following this route that I've already made and searching for more rare ore deposits all around Hyrule than I would do at Pondo's Lodge with the bowling that I mentioned last time. This is my quickest way to get rupees and I fully recommend taking a picture of a rare ore deposit, assigning it to your shaker sensor and just going for a look around. My next tip however though is the elemental weapons. If you aren't familiar with these you can get flame based weapons, thunder based weapons or ice based weapons. Have you ever been in a cold area with just one item of clothing to prevent you from the cold? Sometimes you could put on a flame sword. You don't have to use it, just equip it and that will work effectively the same as one item of clothing to prevent you from the cold. And equally in the heat, the ice type weapons will do the same thing. They will work as a one stage resistance to heat and they will cool you down. So you only really need one item of clothing and one elemental weapon. Or you could just get all the clothing because that's much better. This next tip is something I only really found out recently and I don't know why because I've been playing the game for hours on end. However, at Goron City, if you head yourself over to the Rolling Inn, which is where you can go and rest, you can get yourself a massage as well as a rest. Usually in a town or city's inn, you could have a regular bed or a soft bed, which are fine. However, in the rolling inn, you can get that massage and it will fully recover your hearts, plus three extra temporary hearts. And not only that, it will give you a full temporary stamina wheel on top of what you've already got. That is insane and all for the price of just 80 rupees. You can get a similar treatment in the Zora's Domain if you choose the waterbed option rather than the regular bed. This is also 80 rupees and again gives you three extra temporary hearts on top of a full recovery of hearts and that extra stamina wheel. While out exploring you may want to fish. Now I'm sure we've all seen fish and immediately jumped into the water and chased after them. However, there are much better ways to fish. Unfortunately, Breath of the Wild doesn't have a fishing mechanic, however, you can use bombs. Just throw them in and blow them up, pretty much. The bombs go with the current, so you can throw them in upstream, let it go down to the fish, and blow them up. However, my preferred way of fishing is just to use a shock arrow. If I see some fish down there that I want, I may have put them on my shaker sensor, I don't know, I get myself a shock arrow, blast it down there, and any fish in that radius will just die, and you can go and collect it. Best way to fish, in my opinion. My last tip for this video is about how to defeat guardians. There are many techniques to beat them, obviously shooting them in the eye to stun them, chopping off the legs of the ones that walk. However, did you know if you shoot any of these guardians in the eye with an ancient arrow, it immediately kills them. If you're not familiar with ancient arrows, they are items that can completely wipe out an opponent pretty much. You can get them at the Akala Tech Lab, and all they do is you just fire it at one, like here on the line for example, but they just disappear. You don't get any of the items from it. However, if you manage to shoot a guardian in the eye with an ancient arrow, they will just immediately blow up and you still get all the items. Now the items you get from these guardians pretty much make up for the items you use to create the ancient arrow plus extra. So it's actually quite profitable to just create a bunch of ancient arrows and go out and shoot a load of guardians, get more items and go back, etc, etc. In my opinion, this is the easiest way to defeat a guardian. But that's it from me ladies and gentlemen, they were 10 more tips for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. If you want to see more tips from me, leave a comment down below, leave a like, it always helps. Also go see part 1 if you want to, why the hell not, and also see my walkthrough on the Yiga clan coming up. Please subscribe for that, because it's a very difficult thing to do. But as for here, thank you very much, and I'll see you later. Bye bye.